Hi, I'm Ricardo Ramirez. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Biology at Utah State University and an extension entomology specialist. My lab and I focus on doing research on integrated pest management. And what that involves is looking at what factors might lead for a pest to actually outbreak. Um, how can we prevent pests from occurring in the first place? Uh, and when pests are actually present, well, we evaluate various strategies to suppress pests. So this can involve monitoring practices for improved timing of a management strategy, testing varieties for resistance to a pest, uh, testing current and upcoming pesticides, and also just evaluating other strategies. And this research is all done in an effort to improve uh, integrated pest management or IPM uh, approaches. At the research greenhouse at Utah State University, uh, my lab and I work in one of the res in the greenhouse bays, um, and here's where I wanted to discuss the work that we're involved with, um, that is looking at hemp and the arthropods that are uh, affecting hemp. Now, arthropods include the insects and mites uh, that can act as pests, but there's also beneficials associated with hemp as well. I think it's important to note, given that hemp is a, a new crop, that we're, we're learning uh, a lot about what insects are there, what mites are there, what the actual damage uh, that's being done is, what it looks like, uh, and then also how we can manage that. Um, but we're playing some catch up as we're trying to do some research to determine um, how, do we, how do we actually manage uh, some of these, these pest insects and mites. Now for hemp, we have a few projects that have been initiated that are related to research. And one of the primary ones that I'm associated with is led by Marion Murray, who's the IPM program leader uh, uh, within the Utah Pest Group, the Diagnostics Lab. And uh, with this team uh, from the Pe Utah Pest Group, we've developed a proposal that really begins to gather some of the information on hemp pest management. Now, my side of this project is to look at the insects and mites. And one of the first steps when we're thinking about even how do we manage uh, a pest in a crop is to really identify, well, what pests are there? Um, what's their frequency? And what's the damage that they're actually causing? Just because uh, there's insects there doesn't necessarily mean that uh, they're, they're going to be an issue, but we need to figure that out. Currently, my lab is sampling hemp fields to get a baseline of what we have in Utah. Currently, uh, we are gathering leaf samples to have a uh, more closer inspection of, of what's there. This can be some of the smaller arthropods like mites, aphids, um, but we also use suction sampling to capture more mobile pests, um, some of the insects that are going to fly or that are more hidden and so by using a, a vacuum uh, we can actually just suck them up into a sample bag so we can look at them um, later. I wanted to introduce you to Lauren Gates, who's a graduate student who joined my lab to assist us, and it's part of her research project to uh, learn about pests in hemp and also to start to um, screen hemp, hemp cultivars, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but if this was an actual field day, uh, what we'd probably have uh, Lauren do is to at least demonstrate from the first part of her study, which is to survey hemp fields for pests, is to demonstrate the, the vacuum sampler. And so essentially this is just a, um, a leaf blower that you can invert, so it actually acts as a suction. And then we have uh, some sampling bags that we put on the bottom of, of this suction sampler. Okay, now remember for those interested in obtaining, obtaining CEUs, um, 
at the end of this session, you'll need to email Drew Matthews uh, the answer to uh, this particular question, at least for this session. And so here we're asking which red predatory insect was found in our hemp survey. We'll come back to this slide at the end of the presentation, but you'll, you'll hear about the answer as I'm talking later. From Lauren's initial collections, um, she's found quite a few insects uh, collected off of, um, off of hemp. Uh, a few of them include aphids. Aphids have piercing sucking mouth parts um, and they can reproduce exponentially as you might see in other crops. Uh, we see that with hemp as well. Um, actually, a two different mite mites uh, that we actually find. Two-spotted spider mite is one. That's a common one that we also find, especially during droughty periods when we think of, of corn. We would probably see some similarities uh, in hemp. But another mite, a, a russet mite, is another one that, that we would find specifically in hemp. Um, and so currently we've collected some leaf samples and, and are taking a look at those. Uh, other insects uh, include thrips. Um, these are really tiny uh, insects that also uh, uh, can cause some, some damage as well. And we did have one incident of, of some white flies, but this may result from actual uh, greenhouse stock. Um, now, though that's what we've mostly found, um, there are other hosts, uh, other insects that are, that are actually going to feed on, on hemp as well that we know, at least from the literature, uh, that includes several caterpillars. Um, and so we haven't collected those specifically, but we know that there's a possibility. There's a couple of resources in uh, Colorado that actually show some of this information. Uh, other insects that we've collected are the natural enemies, and I think we, we don't want to forget these. Lady beetles, um, we've collected them in hemp. Uh, lacewings as well, another important predator in the system. Both of these that feed on aphids, uh, smaller uh, insect prey and, and eggs. And then there's also been damsel bugs as well. Um, for each of these uh, beneficial species, we do have some fact sheets that are associated with them to learn more about their biology because they're pretty widespread and can be found in different systems. I'd like to point you to a few resources. Uh, the first one is actually the Utah Pests website. That's the, the group that I'm affiliated with. Marion Murray, as I mentioned, the, the project leader is associated with. Um, <clears throat> and with the Utah Pests uh, website, what I've done here is you'll see a QR code and we'll take just a little bit of time, but if you're not familiar with using these QR codes, what you can do is use your cell phone and open up the camera and point the camera to that QR code on the screen and that should actually once your your camera actually identifies it it should be able to uh, pop up a little link to, to go to that website um, to the Utah Pest website and so hopefully that's one way to at least get you there um, <clears throat> you can also just search for Utah Pests and, and you can find us that way too um, but there you'll find fact sheets, um, video fact sheets, field guides on a lot of different pests and different crops. Um, currently we're working on a field guide with photos for identification, descriptions of pest biology and monitoring um, of pests of hemp. And so that'll be available um, <clears throat> relatively soon. It's not available at the moment, but, but it will be. It's, it's, in, in progress. But in any case, just recognize first off that uh, the Utah Pest site does contain useful information for pests generally. Now, as I mentioned about some of the pests that we currently find um, and that are, are known to feed on hemp is that some of them are pretty general. And so actually, if you look up pest information in other cropping systems, um, you might find some useful information on management in, in that case that can actually transfer over to hemp as well, or as, at least it's something to, to try out. <clears throat> now, the other 
website to, to consider is when we start to think about management, um, of course, right now, we have a lot of limitations on, on management. And so one of the things that we can do is to start to think about, well, what is available in terms of pesticides and the Utah Department of Ag and Food website actually lists specific pesticides that are uh, available for use in hemp. Similar to the Utah Pests QR code, I've added a QR code here that will direct you to that specific website for the uh, Utah Department of Ag and Foods um, pesticide list uh, that they have available. This actually takes you to the website. There is a link that actually opens up a file with a whole list of, of different uh, pesticides that, that can be used or approved for use in Utah. Um, currently with registration, of course, things are going slow. So this will have to be uh, updated and we'll have to check on this um, as, it, as new products become available and as we learn uh, about use of these different products on hemp specifically. In evaluating the different pesticides that are available, uh, I see a couple of different groups here. We have more horticultural oils. So these tend to be uh, those products that are going to act as suffocants um, that really close up the spiracles or the breathing apparatus of insects, uh, which causes that uh, that kind of uh, mortality. Um, along with those oils, I mean, some of them are repellent and also antifedants. Uh, another group are the pyrethrins. So this is uh, the organic version of what we know as pyrethroids. So, you know, this is from uh, what pyrethroids are, are derived from are, are these uh, pyrethrins. These are nerve poisons. Um, as a directin is another one uh, that you see as a large group. So these are antifedants and also disruption of uh, growth and molting. And then we have um, insecticidal soaps are, are also uh, on this list as well, um, disrupting the cell membranes and really uh, desiccating the insects then can desiccate. More of these products are probably most effective against some of the smaller soft bodied insects like aphids and mites. A lot of them were um, have been used in other systems like uh, tree fruits and, and other um, crops where aphids and, and mites have been an issue. So that, that's where you see a lot of those products uh, currently. Now before we end, I just wanted to go back to um, some of the focal projects that uh, Lauren has been working on uh, in the greenhouse and these involve uh, screening of hemp cultivars to look to see if there's any of these uh, cultivars that are more or less uh, susceptible to these insect pests. And so at the moment, as part of the main project is we're screening uh, various hemp cultivars for um, spider mite susceptibility. So we'll place spider mites on uh, these different plants and, and evaluate kind of the growth of, of these pests uh, over time. Um, we'll also start to move from this to looking at caterpillars as well. So we have a couple of things, um, a couple of trials that we'll start to set up as we kind of head into the fall and we can actually gather some of these caterpillars and do some similar tests where we have kind of these uh, different varieties and place place the insects on them, see how they feed, see whether or not they survive or for how long they survive and see if there's any differences among the different uh, cultivars. And then this can also tell us, well, as we start to make our selections, which ones are can we anticipate where we might have more pest issues than others? Now, in addition to this work, um, we're also interested in evaluating, well, how does insect or mite feeding actually impact the CBD levels and THC levels in hemp? Um, so as we know, we have to stay within uh, a certain percentage uh, for THC levels. And so uh, when you stress out a plant, uh, whether it's with insect feeding, does that actually cause major changes and how quick are those changes if they do occur? 
So the take home messages are currently we're finding mites and aphids to be some of the um, main insects that were, and mites that we're finding currently. Uh, there's also several beneficial species. Uh, two sites to consider uh, for resources are the Utah Pest Site but also the Utah Department of Ag and Food site for pesticides that are available for use on hemp. And our research is, is continuing to evaluate those hemp cultivars for their susceptibility to uh, various arthropods, insects, and mites. Thanks for your attention.